Hello, everybody. Uh, we are back once again with a MacGuffin uh, web exclusive, another top five. Uh, I am Alan. I am Brandy. And uh, for this top five, we are doing romantic comedy couples. Yes, we are. And what is your number five? Oh, okay. Let's jump right into it. <laughs> uh, my number five is the musical Swing Time, uh, featuring the classic couple of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Uh, I mean, when you think of couples throughout all of movie history, Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire have got to be in that movie. Yep. Or on that list anyway. I think uh, they did nine films together. Yes, yeah. yes, they did. I mean, people loved it when they got together. And Swing uh, Time is the best. So. It, it certainly is the best. Yeah. Uh, for me, you know, the chemistry was never better. Uh, mm -hmm. The dancing was great. Uh, it's so funny, too. The comedy was good. It is so funny. Um, Except for the accidental racism in that movie, uh, it's I mean, really good. Yeah, I really like a lot it. Of old movies Although you know sure. that movie, I mean that mm -hmm. scene really was an ode to one of his heroes. But unfortunately, you know, thinking back on it now, yeah. it's kind of racist. But it's still a good movie. You guys should check yeah, it out. Yeah, I mean, we don't really need to elaborate too much. Every Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers movie is basically a case of mistaken identity and then a lot of dancing. Yes, and, and that's they're really all, all it is. super, super fun and great. So, yeah. uh, my number five is Moonstruck. Moonstruck. 1987, starring Cher and Nicolas Cage as Loretta and Ronnie, a bit of an odd couple. Um, and I, I think this movie is so funny in a way that a lot of romantic comedies aren't, which is bizarre characters. Um, Ronnie's lost his hand in an unfortunate baking accident that he blames on his brother, who happens to be Loretta's fiance. And Loretta's not too keen on her fiance, and maybe she likes Ronnie better. And so they decide to go to the opera and see <laughs> what happens. Yes, yes. And it's just, uh, you know, you wouldn't think that those two would have the chemistry that they do, but it is great. The, calling them an odd couple is probably the perfect way of, of describing it. I mean, he's kind of like this dirty, like rugged dude, and she's like this chick Very from dramatic. this chick from the uh, neighborhood who you know can spout out and yeah. Uh, and it's completely encapsulated in the famous scene where he says, "Oh, I love you," and she slaps him and says, "Snap out snap of it." Out, yeah, you know, exactly. like that's everything that you need to know in yeah. that movie. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, my number four pick is the classic by Billy Wilder called *The Apartments*, featuring Jack Lemmon and Shirley MacLaine. Um, this movie. She was so pretty when she was young. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're telling me. Yes. Uh, that movie is really. Uh, when you think about it, those two people are really, really uh -huh. lonely. And I yeah, mean, they it's not. I mean, it is kind of a comedy, but it is. There is some dark stuff going on in I'm, the apartment I mean, they, as well. They sacrifice, you know, their well-being for like these fake promises. You know, he gives up his apartment uh, to get a promotion that never comes you know she sticks around with this uh, guy who cheats on his wife uh, thinking that he's going to leave her for mm -hmm. him uh, I mean talking about it, it's not really much of a comedy is it no the, but I mean there there is it is remembered that way because there are a lot of really funny parts and I mean There's, Jack Lemon is Jack Lemon Jack Lemon is probably one of the funniest uh, comedic actors I and I've I mean seen. Billy Wilder might be my favorite director of all time yep. um, and this is I mean that's a great 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 movie with a really interesting central relationship yes okay my number four is uh, <laughs> 1980s action romantic comedy. Okay. <laughs> so it is Romancing the Stone with Ooh. Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner. Uh, he is Jack Colton. She is Joan Wilder. Uh, she writes romance novels for a living, but has never really had any adventure in her own life. Uh, some sort of crazy plot involving her sister being in trouble, and she has to band together with this, you know, sort of crocodile dundee almost but yeah. like if you mix crocodile dundee and indiana jones and then made him like really arrogant uh, <laughs> that would be we, jack holden we, we were on a roll until until this one only because i haven't seen this movie really? i've read I mean, about it's Robert it I, i've read about it i've i've seen trailers it's, it's, all that i just never got gem, around i think i like, never got fun. around to actually got danny devito it. as like the world's most inept villain I, i've always I mean, wanted to watch this movie but i don't know i just never got it's around just one of those it. ones that i've seen on cable so many times that i'm just like oh yeah romance in stone yes fuck yes uh, <laughs> awesome uh so we're on number three right yeah okay so my my number three pick is 
the classic When Harry Met Sally featuring Excellent. Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan. I think if you ask pretty much anybody on the street what their favorite romantic comedy is, they're going to say When Harry Met Sally. I mean, there's... What, what's there wrong anything. with this movie, right? I mean, great dialogue, great characters. Uh, it's not one of those things where they're tr attracted to each other immediately through, phys you know, through their looks or whatever. It's all mm -hmm. about their intellect and their ideas and, and all that stuff. It's a relationship that spans years. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know what else I could say about the movie. Much. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It uh, was one of the first movies that I ever bought on DVD, mm -hmm. and I've watched it many a time. Mm -hmm. It's just like perfect rainy day movie, and those characters are just people that you want to be around, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those movies I can watch over and over again and, and never get tired of. So it, it's a classic. I mean, everyone knows it. So. Yeah, it's wonderful. All right, my number three is uh, John Hughes film, and that is 16 Candles. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, you know, the romantic aspect of it is more just like propelling the emotion of Samantha Baker, Molly Ringwald, um, on her 16th birthday that all of her family has forgotten, and she is enamored of Jake Ryan, the campus stud. Um, I just, I really like the way that this movie handles this thing that you sometimes get, and especially get a lot in high school, where you're really like infatuated with someone and you don't know why and it comes from his end as well but they don't know you know mm -hmm. or she doesn't know at least mm -hmm. that he could ever be interested in her and you know by the end of the film they have said like three words to each other but it still totally works yeah um and it, it's i mean it's, it's a classic uh, it's, for to everyone to me it's hands down john hughes best film it definitely is one of them uh i mean i ha I have to be honest, I haven't seen that in years, so I don't remember much of it, but I do remember liking it very much. So, uh, Moving on to number two, uh, it is Annie Hall featuring Woody Allen and Diane Keaton. Uh, I the think anti-romantic comedy. It is the anti-romantic <laughs> comedy. I, I think this is definitely the prototype for pretty much every romantic comedy that came after uh, 1977 or whatever year this came out. Uh, I mean, any romantic comedy or any romantic movie pretty much where you have two people walking down the street talking to each other uh, is directly taken from Annie Hall. Even when, Mary, when Harry Met Sally is, you know, a version of Annie Hall pretty much. You would, the happier you say? version. The happy version. <laughs> yeah. I mean, classic, classic dialogue. Uh, I think it's very funny. Um, it's thoughtful. These are two very quirky, very uh, neurotic people, obviously. Yeah. Uh, very articulate. Um, I love the way it's edited and put together with the jumping around in time. Uh, it's a great example of, uh, what did I write here? Of an examination of how a relationship builds and ultimately uh, mm -hmm. falls apart. Uh, I love it. It's a classic. Yep. One of the only movies you can classify as romantic comedy that won Best Picture. Yes. So, um, my number two, a uh, little bit of a stretch to call it a romantic comedy, but I just had to get it in there, is uh, Dirty Dancing from 1987. Okay. okay. Francis Baby Hausman and Johnny Castle, the late, great Patrick Swayze. Um, I really defend this movie. I mean, I'll oh, stay away from the, the romantic aspect is great. I really defend this movie a lot as being one of the most like pro feminism movies I've ever seen. Okay. Um, it is very like pro choice, very pro uh, the growth, the intellectual and personal growth of a female character being important, and then. There's a lot of really sexy stuff too. <laughs> so, there's a lot of, yeah, and a lot of and you know, and there's a lot of class stuff going on with those two that is uh, not the kind of thing that you usually see in something that really is, uh, you know, it, it is kind of a comedy. I, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the film. I don't know, yeah, romantic comedy though, it's really more of a straight romance with maybe yeah, some funny parts it in is. it. It is, I'm cheating. Um, the, the musical montages where he's like <laughs> lifting her up in the water and they're dancing on that log in the forest. Maybe a little too much for me, but. It's it, fun. It's, it's, it's all right. Super fun. It's all right. Uh, for my number one pick, I am going to go way, way back to the silent era uh, and pick City Lights. Excellent. Uh, featuring the Tramp and the Blind Flower Girl. Uh, to me, this has got to be one of the greatest, mm -hmm. not just romantic comedies, but just one of the great films ever made. Uh, it's so it's romantic. Wonderful. It's so sweet. It's so funny. Uh, it's unlike the last couple of picks that I chose, you don't need dialogue to tell a story. 
Um, you doing it all. I saw this once at um, a screening, where, and there was like a whole family, and the little kids were like enraptured by it. Mm -hmm. You know, like it is just so wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to ask you: Do you think that they really get together in the end? Because it's still being debated. Uh, it's, you know, it's decades open. And I, decades later. I'm kind of a hopeless romantic, so I. <laughs> kind of want to lean towards to they do get together but the build-up to that moment is so great mm -hmm. I mean this guy does everything he can to pay for this girl's eye surgery and then when she finally gets her vision he's so afraid of like revealing himself to her that because you know he's actually a poor poor dude mm. and the moment they touch hands and she like looks at him oh man I'm all oh god you gonna cry? I, I'm tearing up right cry? now yeah, let's, just, <laughs> let's not talk about it anymore Number one. <laughs> All right. My number one is also an old film, not quite that old. Um, and it is the one of the just one of the greatest films ever made, and that is the Philadelphia Story from 1940, the love triangle of Katherine Hepburn, Cary Grant, and J Jimmy Stewart is just phenomenal. Um, I think I've mentioned this one on the podcast mm -hmm. before and said that the first time that I saw it, I really didn't know which guy she was going to go for. And I think that is probably uh, potentially unique amongst romantic comedies. Uh, <laughs> you, Yeah, you've got to love a film where you have one girl being fought over by like three different dudes. <laughs> That's, yep, yeah, there but, is. You know, because the, the, neither one of those guys is even her fiance <laughs> that yeah, she's supposed geez. to be marrying that wow, weekend. That's you know, Carrie Green choice. is her ex-husband. She's this, you know, debut. She, she's mean, she's a socialite who's mar marrying another, you know, prominent businessman. And then Jimmy Stewart is the photographer reporter who has been sent to cover the wedding for this magazine and of course that's not what he wants to be doing with his life he wants to be writing it's, short yeah. stories so. i mean i don't really care much for the film but i thought it was really funny i thought are you fucking kidding me oh. you don't really care that much for the philadelphia no, i story? enjoy i enjoy <laughs> holy crap i'm about to run damn i just stuck on this oh jesus no i really like that film i i mean i haven't seen it since the first time i watched it oh jesus i'm so scared oh my god alan like that is just like this may be the last time you ever see me so this was fun. No, you know, I, no, I really I liked know. it. I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> I, know, I like the film. I don't hate it. I don't think it's you a bad film. You just said you didn't like it. No, I said I didn't care much for it. <laughs> like if you... <laughs> oh, my God. oh, God. Oh, my God. If you have any romantic comedies <laughs> that you want to share, please hit us up on themcguffinpodcast.com. It's just going to be me because Alan won't be here anymore. <laughs> I'm going to go run away now. So bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>